Well, hello friends and welcome. Today we have a much better sound quality as some of you may or may not notice. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, you're probably not noticing, but um, <laughs> I got a new microphone for my birthday and I'm just really excited to finally use it. It is a Blue Yeti, for those of you who might be curious, it is a very good microphone, at least for what I'm doing, and yeah, I'm just excited to talk normally for once. Um, the microphone I used before, it's not actually a microphone on its own, it just came with the gaming set that my boyfriend got a while ago. Um, and it was pretty bad, not gonna lie, I had to talk really really loud so it would pick up what I'm saying, which wasn't completely awful, like it worked and everything, but after recording for like an hour or so, my voice was just getting raspy and my throat would start hurting, so yeah. And then I would also have to heavily edit everything so it would be decent and it just took so much time. Um, so yeah, I'm really stoked about a new mic, as you can tell. And let's get started, I'm, I'm rambling already. Um, so today's video was actually supposed to be a celebration of us getting to 1000 subscribers here on YouTube but because I didn't have the time to make it when it actually happened we are instead celebrating 1200 subscribers which is insane <laughs> absolutely insane thank you so much I don't know it's insane to me but yeah I thought right now would be a good time to answer some of your questions since we grew so much lately and and many people don't know anything about me at all. So yeah, I made a community post like a month ago where you could ask me art related stuff or just anything else you wanted to know about me. But because most of my audience is on Instagram, I also got some questions from there. But before I get to answering your questions, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the drawing I'm doing here. So this is a draw this in your style challenge hosted by my friend Theo who is such a sweet girl. Check out her account if you like her character too. I did like it and I decided to join her challenge so this is what you're seeing right now. Now I just want to mention that I had some troubles with the recording again so the beginning and the end of the time lapse are taken from Procreate automatic time lapse recording while the rest of the recording is done by reflector in real time. So if you're seeing differences in this video that is essentially why. Also, if anyone knows a better way to screen share my iPad other than Reflector, please let me know about it. I've had so many problems with this app, but I just don't know any other way of doing it without like buying extra cables and stuff like that. So if you know a better way of doing this, please let me know. I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's finally get started with the questions, shall we? So the first question is... I've been burnt out for the past 6 months, I don't know how to get over it, every time I go back to making art it looks bad I suppose because I haven't drawn in so long. Alright, so I get this kind of question about burning out quite a lot but I can only tell you what works for me personally because I feel like this is caused by different reasons for each person. So for example, I personally feel that way when I accept way too many projects at the same time and I'm starting to feel overwhelmed with the amount of work I have to get done in a week. Um, that is also when I am skipping multiple weekends in a row, so instead of taking some time off and recharge, I keep on working and planning during the weekend as well. And while this may work for a week or two, after a while I'm just starting to feel like the tension and stress that I've accumulated and this whole thing essentially transforms into me not being in the mood to draw anymore or doing it because I have to but not liking the outcome anyways. So if I get to that point, I know I have to take some time off. Like that for me is a clear sign that I've been overworking myself and I just need to take a step back. And so I do take some time off and that is when I realize how tired I actually am because I feel like sleeping all the time, I have low energy all the time, I'm not in the mood for anything at all. Like because I'm allowing myself to take a break, I can finally see my emotions and what I've been actually feeling like for the past couple of weeks. 
So once again, for me personally, when this happens, taking time off works every time. But for you, the reason you're feeling that way might be different. So you need to figure out the cause of the burnout first in order to know what you can do about it, you know? The next question is, wait, no, it's not an actual question, but it says, I'm starting an art YouTube channel. I need some advices. Right, so I feel like the most important thing when you're starting a YouTube channel of any kind really is figuring out your niche first, which you already have, and then what kind of content you want to make. And if you have those things somewhat clear in your head, you can do some research based on that by observing what other people in your niche are doing, basically. Um, but also take small steps because you will most probably change your content or the way you're doing things in the first videos. So maybe don't think about that aspect too much and try to focus on things that will actually represent your channel. Like what banner you'd like to have, will you do it yourself? Will you commission someone to do it for you? Um, and the same goes with the intro of your videos. So will you have an animated intro? Will you write something as your intro? I don't know, just creative decisions like that might just help you get the ball rolling. Because content wise, I don't think you will ever have the perfect formula to get started. Like we all try out stuff until we figure out how it works and what people want, what we want to do, of course. So just post something you think has value of any kind and see how it goes and i don't know every time i get this kind of question i have like the same answer whether it's about starting a youtube channel or an instagram account like just notice what other people you like are doing and try to implement it in your own stuff and when you're done ask yourself if one day you came across this account randomly would you follow it do you like it enough to want to stick around you know because if you don't feel that way about it most people won't feel that way either but other than that i'm not really sure what else to say because i'm not big on algorithms um or growing techniques and stuff like that i'm just pretty much eyeballing as i go i'm trying to connect with my audience more than anything and you know hopefully things will improve on their own what do you think you would do if you weren't an artist okay so this is funny to me i just want to say something real quick here um so this is actually my friend mimi who knows me in real life because we were colleagues in uni and every time i ask stuff on instagram she's like asking a bunch of questions to help me out in case i don't get any questions at all <laughs> which is really nice of her like i really appreciate it a lot so shout out to mimi for like the next three questions or so so what would i do if i wasn't an artist well honestly i thought about this recently because i was having a conversation about jobs and how people don't think what i'm doing is an actual job so i thought about what i would do if the internet wasn't a thing and i came to the conclusion Conclusion that I would most probably do another creative profession so maybe something like interior design photography animation or stuff like that I don't think I would strain too far from the creative industry to be honest do you have any siblings I do not have any siblings I am an only child how old are you I just turned 26 on September 19 how was the process of finding your art style? Did you always have a specific one? Did it change? So this question is always funny to me because I never considered my art style as being a consistent one. I feel like it changes from one drawing to another based on what I'm into at the time. Um, and I know that it changed from when I first got started, but I feel like that's only because my skills have improved over time. And I also had like just one artist that I looked up to at the time, you know, being a noob in digital art and all that. I was basically trying so hard to draw like them it was insane honestly i don't like the artworks from that time very much it just doesn't feel like me at all but the difference is i guess that now i'm observing many more artists at the same time so i'm not trying to copy anyone i'm just observing their techniques and workflow and try to implement them into my own style so i'm not focusing on having a specific art style as much as trying to learn new techniques and find out what i like and what works for me what ipad do you use for your art 
I'm using the iPad Pro 11 inch from 2018 and it still works absolutely amazing. Um, the only issue I'm having is the memory, of course, memory is never big enough. Face reveal, oh my god, so this is one of the most, if not the most frequent question I get. Even now I got it like 6 times, so I'm happy to finally address this once and for all. Um, the thing is that in real life, I'm very shy as a person and I'm also very private, so the thought of me putting my face out there for thousands of people to see it, it's unsettling to say the least. Like imagine going from not even updating my Facebook profile picture in the past 5 years to posting full videos or even pictures of me to so many people. Like that would be a huge step, wouldn't it? So I'm aware that at some point I will have to make this step in order to better connect with my audience because at the end of the day I too enjoy watching other artists do their thing and know what they look like and stuff like that. But but right now I just don't feel comfortable enough doing that. It's a very scary thought <laughs> because as you know the internet can be a cruel place sometimes and even though people can be mean for no reason at all, it would still most probably affect my self esteem. Like just look at what's going on with Dream right now, it's absolutely insane. And I'm not comparing myself with him, obviously that is not the point, but it's just an example of people being extremely rude to someone doing a face reveal for no actual reason. So yeah, I don't know, I will eventually do it, but just not right now. Are you able to make a living out of being an artist or do you have other jobs besides this? So the short answer to this would be yes, I am able to make a living as an artist and no, I do not have any other jobs besides this and as a matter of fact, this has been my one and only job so far. However, the long answer would be that right now, I am only earning the minimum amount required to live and that's it. So yes, I am able to pay my bills, buy food and other stuff that I need in a month, but if I were to get sick or go on a holiday or have unexpected expenses or stuff like that, I would have to access my savings account because my monthly income would not cover that. But you know, because it's a creative field, no month is ever the same. Like I had months when I could barely afford visiting my mom and months when I was actually able to save up. and buy pricier stuff that I wouldn't usually be able to buy. So there are ups and downs especially if you don't have like a big audience because that essentially goes hand in hand with your income. So if you grow consistently it will only get better because after you reach a certain number you will start getting sponsorships and you will eventually be able to have a higher income. But it definitely requires a lot of patience and faith that you will one day succeed. Where is your main income coming from? I'm worried about choosing this career path. Alright, so my main income is from doing commissions. However, this is once again something that can be done if you have somewhat of an audience. Because I've only been able to make a living out of doing commissions this year, which is my third year of doing digital art. Now, of course, not everyone's journey is the same. You may be better at, I don't know, advertising yourself or maybe your skills are much better than mine when I started out. Um, maybe people will find your art very good and want to stick around much easier than my personal experience. So, you know, there are lots of factors influencing your growth. So I don't want to speak for everyone. Um, but I personally started my Instagram account in my last year of uni and I knew I wanted to do this full time. So I was able to save up quite a lot during the last two years of school and use the savings as like a safety net for me to get started without actually getting any other side job. But if I didn't have these savings, I would have gotten another job for sure because I was obviously earning way too little money from doing commissions back then. Like I remember having extremely low prices because I had around 500 followers and obviously I barely had a commission a month so I was charging something like 30-35 dollars on everything even though it took me days to finish it. But yeah, it is a journey indeed and I heavily advise you to have a plan or a safety net in case it will take longer to be able to make a living out of it. 
I think I will answer all commission related questions now because I feel like they go hand in hand and I would like to have them organized. So the next one is, I noticed you increased the pricing of your commissions recently. When is a good time to do that? I never know if my prices are too low or too high. Could you share your opinion on this? Absolutely, yes. So firstly, this is a very complex subject and I could do like a whole video on commissions if this is something you're interested in, um, including prices, terms and conditions, I don't know what my process looks like when communicating with clients, all that stuff. So let me know if that's something you'd like to know. So yes, I did increase my prices recently and it's something I do whenever I get way too many commission requests in a month and I'm not able to accept all of them. So that for me is a clear sign that essentially the demand is larger than the supply, to put it simply. And because I only accept 4 commissions a month, the waitlist would be ridiculously long, you know like 2 or even 3 months worth of waiting which to me is just not a good deal. Not for me, not for the clients, so that I think is a good time for me to increase the prices. But I only increase them slightly with like $5 or something like that. Depends on the type of commission, really. Now, I know some creators, for example, increase the prices if their following count goes up. So if you have a huge follower boost, you'd be able to increase the prices accordingly. But I personally don't think that's the best reason to increase them because even if you have plenty of followers, you still might just get a few commission requests and that's just not benefiting you at all. So I would still increase them by demand and not follower count. Do you get hate comments like unsolicited critique? Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. Um, I, I don't think I do to be honest and if there are comments like these, I just never saw them. I think I'm not so big yet that I get all kinds of weird and hateful comments, so I don't know, my community has been very supportive the whole time, so yeah, I, I don't think I have any hate comments thankfully. Do your friends know about your account? Oh my god, yes they do. <laughs> And it's the most awkward thing in the whole world. One out of 10 do not recommend. <laughs> um, when I started the account, I remember I didn't tell anyone at all about it except my mom and my boyfriend because I felt incredibly weird about people knowing me in real life as a very private person and then seeing me online like talking in English and posting personal stuff and I don't know it's it's definitely one of the things keeping me up at night to be honest and you'd think it would get better over time but it didn't I still feel awkward about it I never check my insights because I don't want to know I don't want to know who's watching my stories or my videos or anything at all I'm just no thank you out of sight out of mind <laughs> And finally, we have some community questions and the first one is How do you put together a piece? Where do you find references, pick color palettes, combine multiple references? Um, I've said this before, but all of my references are from Pinterest. You have the link in the description box if you'd like to see my collections and everything. But yeah, sometimes I do combine references. So I would have a reference for the pose, one for the aesthetic, one for details or accessories, one for the outfit and all that. But most of the time I already have like an idea in my head and I'm only using references for the pose. And if I don't find the pose I want in like 10 minutes, or so, I just take a photo of myself and use it as a reference. And regarding color palettes, I usually stick with complementary colors because that's what I like the most. But whenever I want to try a different color palette, I just check out coolers and pick something from there. What is your hobby except from art? Well, if I would ever have free time again, I would love to get back into reading and playing the piano. But unfortunately, my hobbies have suffered quite a lot in the past couple of years, so there's that. Are you ever going to do something with your subs, aka draw with them or rate their drawings? I would absolutely love to do this 100%. However, because I'm not yet monetized on YouTube, I simply cannot afford to post all the things I want to post on time. And doing something with you guys, like rating drawings and stuff like that, would mean that I should do a video shortly after you've submitted your drawings, which is something I just can't do right now. As I said before, my main income is from doing commissions, and I only do videos whenever I have some 
some extra time in between. But of course when I will finally get monetized, I will most definitely do some fun stuff with you guys. But until then, you just gotta help me out with the algorithm by leaving a like or subscribe to get there faster, I guess. Alright friends, that was the last question. Some of them were repeating, so if your question didn't make it, yes it did. But anyways, thank you so much for watching or listening. I hope you enjoyed getting to know me better. Thank you so so much once again for 1200 subscribers. And as always, if there's some other topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below because I do read all of them. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like these. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye!